the opportunity to give the talk, I, I guess it will be the comic part of the, <laughs> of the afternoon because there is no equations. You know, I'm going, the, my talk um, title is uh, Personal Medicine and Oncology. So I will talk oncology. I won't talk about other um, medical areas. And besides the fact that clinical perspective, when we, when we see a question, a statistical equation, we get a panic disorder, and that's what I got here. So I had to get every time outside of the room just to um, get recover. Um, so I will try to give you a kind of a, a sense of uh, our perspective of what's going on. And oncology, I think, is the main uh, area in medicine that personalized medicine is needed most. So. The funny thing about personalized medicine that people already realized that uh, physicians especially realized that uh, each patient is different from every other patient. And I'm not talking about a breast cancer and cardiovascular patient. I'm talking about one breast cancer compared to the other breast cancer patient, okay? So we all recognize it from the beginning. And um, there is a, and, and in, in fact, uh, Sir William Osler, you see when he, when he was alive, said that if it were not for the great variability among individuals, medicine might have well been a science and not an art. So I'm an artist. I am not a scientist. And however, although people recognize it a long time, when people start to do clinical trials and to develop treatments, they, they went to the semi-empirical approach to therapy. And what, what, is it, what is it you see here on the slide? You have an observation, you have a diagnosis, you take in an action with one of, with the drug, and then you see if it's working or not. But you don't have really the idea before you start the, the treatment if it will work, except for the fact in oncology that the, the treatment that was used until 10 years ago and are still being used today, you can see that they uh, inhibit proliferation of cells. And this is an example. This is one of the m more important clinical trials in the last 30 years. Bonadonna, Italian, went to Italy, took breast cancer patients uh, with localized disease, and he divided them, them into two groups. One group will, after the surgery, will go into follow-up, and the other group will get chemotherapy. It's three drugs for half a year. And then he, he follow, followed them for 20 years, and this is a... a New England Journal of Medicine paper from 1995. And you can see that there is um, an advantage for the, for the groups that get the, the treatment. However, now you are statisticians. I don't know what you see in this, in this curve, but I know what I see in this curve. I see that 90% of the patients didn't benefit from the treatment, even though this is a positive, um, a positive uh, trial. And because it's a positive trial, that's what we give the patients. And CMF is a treatment that we give the patients. Today, today we're less giving, the, giving it to them, but this is a, a treatment that used to be given to the patients after surgery for decades. So 90% of the patients didn't benefit, either because uh, they wouldn't need the treatment in the first place. These are these patients. Or either because even after getting the drug, they, um, the disease progressed and they died from the disease. So you can, when you are looking on, uh, on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the clinical trials in general, you can see that there are the, the, a very small fraction of patients that uh, benefit. Some of them are, uh, are harmed from the, from the treatment, some of them are not. But most of the patients don't benefit, and some of them even uh, even die from the treatment. So there is a huge problem here, and for me, when a, a patient coming to my practice, and I need to explain him that he's going to get this kind of devastating treatment, and he might have a chance of 10% to benefit from it. It's a big problem, but this is our job, and that's what we are doing, and I can tell you, at least in the Jewish population, that even if I will tell them there, there will be 2% advantage, they will take the treatment. And I'm serious about it, because this is a cultural thing. In other in other places, they might not take it. Here they will. It's not only about um, 
Jewish or not Jewish, it's also about women and men. Breast cancer patients will go for a will go for a treatment in one percent advantage. Prostate cancer patients, I doubt. And another issue here is so uh, randomized clinical trials. When we are talking about the the the, the empirical time provide evidence of efficacy at uh, population level for 50 years, that's what you see here, 22% in oncology patients. When, when, you, when you give a treatment for an, an ergastic, most of them will benefit, or there will be efficacy in 80%. But in, in, uh, in, in uh, cancer patients, we are running with treatments after they were, they were proved, proved to, to work on 22% efficacy, which means that only... This means that relatively low response rate to existing medicines means that the administration of drugs to non-responders is a major public health issue, okay? Now, another issue in oncology is success rates from first in men to registration, and because we don't in the old, er in the old era, and because we, don't, we didn't use biomarkers, so we just started to give treatments uh, first in human, but eventually only 5% of these treatments were um, were, registr were registered at the FDA, okay? This is compared to cardiovascular, that it's 20%. And taking all of this together, that's what happens in oncology field. Since 1970 to 2003, there is no change in mortality rate of uh, cancer patients. This is compared to cardiovascular patients and, and CVA patients, that really benefit from, the, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, advances in their field. And patients don't have time. They don't have time for trial and error. When they are, uh, getting, the, when they are uh, getting sick with lung cancer, most of the chances that they will die in one year. Okay, so here we are coming to the personalized medicine, or more, let's start with the targeted therapy. And the targeted therapy is based on the fact that in the last 30 years we are starting more and more to understand what is the biology of cancer. And because we understand what is the biology of cancer, we start to recognize new targets. And if we start to recognize new targets, we might um, discover or we might um, develop a drug towards this target. But when we are doing it, we might ask the question if the patient has the target in his disease. And this is the idea. And the idea is actually to recognize um, a target for the disease that we have a drug to and to see that the patient has it. And the tools for personalized medicine approach, there are two that you can see here, so the pharmacogenetics and pharmacogenomics. Pharmacogenetics is what is really going on now. The pharmacogenomics is the future. In the pharmacogenetics, there is a, uh, it's a candidate gene approach focus on one gene or several genes. The genome-wide approach is what now people are trying to develop, is actually taking the tumor from patient and find the sequence or to um, sequence all the genome or maybe all the exons and then to find the specific mutation of the spe specific patient and tailor the specific treatment to him. Here are some of the predictive markers that we use after with the pharmacogenetic approach, you can see here some of them that I guess some of you know about trastuzumab for HER2 and the uh, imatinib, which is Glivec for CKIT or BCR Abelson. And, and uh, down below, you can see the RAS mutation, which is something different. This is actually a negative predictive marker. The patient with colon ca colorectal cancer that will have mutation in RAS oncogene, they won't be they won't get the treatment with cetuximab, which, which is an EGFR inhibitor. So there are some, today we use some um, positive markers and some negative markers, but the idea is to start to make subpopulations and to stratify the patients based, based on the markers and to decide which treatment to give to which patient. And this, and the, I gave you some examples for how well it is working in some of the patients. For example, in uh, leukemia patients, you can see in 1949, leukemia is an umbrella term for disease of the blood, and there are no effective treatments, and no one survived. 2009, there are 38 subtypes 
identified, five-year survival of 70%, and there are specific diseases like CML, chronic myeloid leukemia, which we gain, which we have a survival benefit of 90%. Imatinib, it's Glivec, when it was uh, discovered for CML, but what is nice about these drugs, that some of them are targeting other targets, not only the specific targets that they were designed for. In this uh, case, the um, um, C-Kit, and there is a disease that is driven by the C-Kit. So they did, so researchers did the, the uh, clinical trial for, for, for GIST, and there was very positive results. And that's what we want to find. We want to, to, to advance uh, the medicine through this approach. The same in, with BRAF and melanoma recently. So um, still today, most patients are treated in a few similar ways, but increasingly, treatment will be tailored to patient groups defined by molecular markers of disease or drug response. And for this, we need new toolkits. We need to develop, besides the, development, the drug development, and today there are 1,000 drugs in the pipeline, we need to develop the, the toolkits for every drug in order to develop her in a personalized based approach and to bring it to the market. Okay, I, I understand that I haven't got a lot of time. Yeah. I, will, I will move on uh, because I see you like moving. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, it's okay. I just wanted to mention, I, I, what I wanted to just to, I just wanted to point to, to issues because of this new era of personalized medicine, we need to think differently in terms of um, clinical trials design. There is a phase, it's, we can't use anymore the classical phase one, two, and three. Now we are more talking about phase zero and then phase one, two, proof of concept. In the chemotherapy era, you needed to decide what is a, a maximal tolerated dose in order to understand which is a dose that the patient won't die from it. But today, most of the new drugs are not, we are not reaching the MTD. We are not reaching the dose that they are suffering from uh, adverse events. So we need to, to look more on the pharmacodynamics and see that it is doing what it needs to do, which means to target the, the target. And eventually, what is going to happen, and this, it's starting to happen right now, that you will need um, um, the, the development program will be much faster. You see, instead of 10 to 12 years, it will be three to five years. You will need a, a smaller population. And this is actually the, um, the future. So, okay, so I will skip off the last two. Okay, so I will speak about the future in terms of uh, FDA. They insist of diagnostic links that decrease side effects and improve efficacy with new therapies. For the payers, they demand diagnostics to, man to manage drug cost and improve patient care. Approval for targeted drugs depends on efficacy. Pharmaceutical companies reduce drug failure in late clinical trials and on the market. Increase efficacy, show real value of the drug. And for the patients, improve care, more effective treatment with less toxicity. Personalized medicine, the future again, in the diagnostic term, turns the hype into reality. 3% of the cost, 70% of the medical decision, make new drug works. More than 60% of cancer drugs in development today are targeted agents and will need diagnostics to determine use. It saves money. It reduces ineffective use of drugs and treatments. It saves lives. It gives physicians information to, to better use options available. We don't need to use the same drug like today. We take Taxan and we give all kinds of, kind of patients. We will give it only to the patients that deserve the drug. Deliver on the promise the right drug to the right patient at the right time. So I'm directing the Institute of Oncology in Shiba and it's looked like this. We have a center for, for lung cancer and we have a center for breast cancer and for colon cancer. All of these are units in the center. And this might be the future units based on molecular biology, based on targets, based, of dr based on drugs. 